welcome to the Winnesquatucket River Watershed. I'm Sarah Canyol. I'm the Education Director for the Winnesquatucket River Watershed Council. And today we are going to be talking about watersheds. Um, so right here I have my watershed model um, and we are going to check out and see what happens when pollution enters our watershed. So for those of you who don't know, right behind me is actually a map of the Winnesquatucket River watershed. And probably a lot of you at this point are thinking, what's a watershed? I don't know what that is. Um, so in its simplest terms, a watershed is an area of land where all of the water drains to one place. Um, the easiest way that I remember thinking about this is you can think about a tub. So you've got a tub, right? And all of the water that flows into the tub hits different parts of it. However, all the water eventually goes where? It goes right down the drain, right? At the lowest part in the tub. So thinking about our watershed, you've got all of this land, right? And then the Winnesquatucket, it starts all the way up in North Smithfield. So you've got all of this land that's shaped and has different curves and elevations. And the water droplets that come down when it rains or when it snows falls and then moves down to the lowest part of the watershed. So here on our model, I want you to take a second and think about where's the lowest part in our watershed right now? Is it up here? Maybe over here? Down here, maybe? Take a second and think about it. Generally, the name of the watershed is actually the water body that all of the water droplets drain into. So if we're in the Winnesquatucket River watershed, all of the water eventually drains to the Winnesquatucket River. So that's our location that we're thinking about when we're thinking about all the things we put on our model, where it's all going to go. Um, Back to my map right here, just to finish up all of the different places in the Winnesquatucket River watershed. We've got North Smithfield all the way up here, and we actually enter Smithfield, a little chunk of Gloucester, um, Johnston, North Providence, and then the Winnesquatucket River watershed ends in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, right by the mall at Water Place Park is actually the area where the Winnesquatucket and the Mashasic meet together and flow directly into the Providence River. Cool. So now that we know a whole bunch about our dear Winnesquatucket watershed, we're gonna play with our watershed model. So we've set it up already so that there are lots of different things going on in this model. We have our whole entire town set up. And you can imagine that this is Providence, Rhode Island, right? So we've got people walking on the streets with their dogs. We've got lots of different cars and traffic. We've got even a boat in our river. We have a barnyard. Obviously, we don't have palm trees in Rhode Island, but please use your imaginations. We've got a little bit of tree cover. We have a big factory right over here, and we have a residential area. So when we think about watersheds and watershed health, the biggest thing that we want to focus on is we want to make sure that we're thinking about the way that pollution impacts our watershed. So Providence is a city, right? And the big issue with being in a city is that there's a lot less green and a lot more gray, right? So we're seeing lots of surfaces. The big word for this is impermeable surfaces. So we've got a lot of those impermeable surfaces where you can see I'm pouring water on my model. Is that water getting soaked up? No, right? It's just hanging out on the model. Oh, but right now it's definitely raining. And you can see all of the different pollution that's on the pavement. Does it stay on the pavement? So now we are going to talk about all the different types of pollution that impact our watershed. Now would be a really great time to pause this video and take a second to brainstorm different types of pollution that you see in your area. So the first type of pollution that we're going to talk about today is all of the candy wrappers, all of the water bottles, all of the plastic bags that you see lining our streets is something called litter, right? So there's all different kinds of litter. 
And what happens, it comes from all over, right? So maybe the dump truck or the trash man accidentally let some of the trash go. Or maybe little Becky is having a nice little picnic right by the river, but she put her trash directly down on the ground. Um, it can come from lots of different places and it's definitely not always intentional, but litter is something that we see all over all of the time. Another really major pollutant that we want to think about when it comes to what we do while we're out and about and going for walks has to do with my friend right here. We take our pets for walks, right? When they have to do their business outside. Sometimes, if we do not pick up our waste from our pets, that waste stays on the streets and it's gross if you step on it, number one. But <laughs> the main issue is that there is lots of bacteria inside of that waste that when it enters our waterways, it actually increases the bacteria level in the water. That's called fecal coliform, and that's something that we test for to make sure that our rivers are safe. Um, we also, besides dogs, we don't really see this a lot in Providence, but for learning about this model, we're gonna talk about it anyways. There's also lots of waste that comes from our agricultural or rural areas. So when we're looking at our sweet little farmland right here, we also have sheep and cows, which serve lots of different purposes, but they go to the bathroom too, right? So their waste can be really impactful for the waterways that are near them as well. So we've got our litter, we've got our dog waste. Humans go to the bathroom too, right? We do lots of stuff. We go to the bathroom, we wash our hands. I hope you're washing your hands a ton right now. Um, but we wash our hands, we wash our dishes, we take showers. We use a bunch of water at home. And that water goes down the drain, right? And that's the last that we see of it. But it goes to a special place. So depending on where you live, you may have a septic tank, which is a tank that's under the ground and stores all of your wastewater. And then eventually you get it pumped out. Or if you're living in Providence, you probably are connected to our entire wastewater system. We're really lucky the amazing people at Narragansett Bay Commission actually take all of our wastewater and turn it into not potable, which means drinkable, but water that is safe enough to return back to our local waterways. Um, however, sometimes we get a little bit too much overflow at our wastewater treatment centers. And that actually can go semi-untreated into our waterways. Another big issue kind of going back to septic tanks is that a septic tank, if it's older, a lot of the times you have them in pretty older homes, they can crack or they can overflow if you don't pump it out at the appropriate time. And that untreated waste will just go directly into the waterway. So we're done talking about bathrooms for now. Um, Moving on to a different part of our watershed, we're gonna start thinking about our cars. So we live in the city and there are lots of different forms of transportation, but one of the hugest forms of transportation around our whole entire country is using cars, right? And so with cars, there's lots of different things that go up into our earth because of us using that form of transportation. Um, so our cars, the biggest one that we normally hear is that cars produce air pollution, which is totally true, right? You put gas in your car to make it go, but your car burns that gas and then the, um, the remnants of that go up into the atmosphere and stay there. So we're gonna use this as a symbol for what that happens in our atmosphere, right? Another big thing, that I like to think about at this time is we live in Rhode Island where it snows in the winter time, right? And so we put lots of salt on our roads to help make it drivable for us. But when that salt and that dirt enters our waterways, it can actually be a pretty harmful for the environment because our rivers aren't salty and it's not used to having all of that dirt and pollution that comes with it. 
So another thing that we have coming from our cars is something called antifreeze. So antifreeze is a chemical that we put in our cars to help make them run. It helps keep our exhaust moving um, and keeps, our, um, keeps it from freezing. But it's a really, really dangerous chemical when it's not inside of your car. It smells really sweet. It kind of smells like maple syrupy. If you ever like smell that coming from a car or a boat, that's generally a sign that there may be an issue with a leak. Um, but for animals that live in the area, antifreeze smells really sweet to them and it can be really harmful. So that's a really dangerous chemical that goes into the watershed. So another big one that we're gonna talk about with cars is we like our cars to be nice and clean, right? And sometimes we take them to a car wash where they do it for us and they remove all of the harmful chemicals for us um, that can build up on our cars. But sometimes we may do it at home. So let's say, I'm gonna move this car. Beep, beep. Backing up in our neighborhood. And so maybe this house right here, they're washing their car at home. It got a little bit of antifreeze on it. They had a big leak. And I'm washing my car. All of the soap and all of the things that were on my car that were harmful are now going into the waterway. So some of our last and really important types of pollution that we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about two more types. If we go over here to our barnyard or to our farm, a lot of um, different chemicals are put in our farms to help our plants grow big and strong. So we're thinking about fertilizer. We're also thinking about insecticides and pesticides, which are um, chemicals that are used to manage pests. So all of those chemicals can be really, really, really harmful. I'm gonna put it right here. So our fertilizer, I'm gonna scoot back to that. So our fertilizer helps make our plants go really big and strong. However, when fertilizer enters our waterways, it helps make a special kind of plant or algae grow in the water. Um, so when we have lots of algae, it's called an algal bloom, and that algae actually makes it really hard for anything else to live. So it hangs out at the top of the surface of the water, and it makes it really hard for light to get into the water and for anything else to grow. You can think about maybe a time that you went to the beach and there was so much seaweed in the water that you didn't really want to go for a swim. That happens in our ponds and our rivers too, where there's lots of algae, not necessarily seaweed, but lots of algae that grows and makes it really difficult for the water to conduct business as usual. Right. So our last and the biggest source of pollution that has impacted our Winnesquatucket River is right over here in our factory. So back in the day during the Industrial Revolution, Providence was a major, major hub for lots of different textile mills and factories and even a lot of jewelry making and automobile making, which is crazy, right? Um, so a lot of those factories, this was before there were lots of really great regulations and they would actually dump a lot of their dyes or their pollution directly into the river. So the pollution goes directly into the river. Um, in the Wenasquatucket, we have a really harmful type of pollution called dioxin that is still at the bottom of our river, even though the Industrial Revolution was about 100 years ago. Um, a lot of the time, these harmful chemicals, such as dioxin, actually doesn't break down naturally. The uh, dioxin actually needs to be removed by a process called dredging. Uh, which is something that is actually happening in Winnesquatucket right now. Um, so those are all of the different types of pollution and of course there are so much more that we're not going to be talking about today. But now we've got a very polluted town. What do you think happens when we have water that enters all of this pollution? Take a second to think about it. Oh, Hurricane Sarah is coming into town. 
And sometimes it sprays a little bit, and then other times it might have a pretty heavy flow, right? So you can see all of the pollution moving. And look at our waterway now. Does that look like a place you want to swim? Or a place that our frog friend would be happy living in? Oh, well, of course not, right? So we want to do everything we can to make sure we're protecting our waterways and protecting our land so that it's safe for all of our animal friends that live in the water. Now is a really great time to start thinking about the solutions for all of the issues of pollution that we talked about today. So thinking of small things that we can do to help make a difference so that this doesn't happen to our Wenasquatecket River. One really amazing thing that we're doing here at the Watershed Council is we are adding lots of green to our gray areas, right? So this is something that is called um, green infrastructure. It is the adding of green space into areas so that water and pollution can pass through them. So if we put something, say we put, this is a tree that I'm holding. Um, again, use your imaginations. <laughs> um, but if this tree was right here, it would make it a lot more difficult for the pollution to enter our river, right? We have a buffer. Usually when it's right by the river, that big word for a buffer is called a riparian buffer. So we are working really hard to add lots of green space to our Winnesquatucket watershed, but there's so much that you can do at home. So please take the time to think about and start doing some things that can really help out our sweet Looney River. Thanks for watching.